Climate of fear or climate of fact? The Alberta government is spending $9 million trying to convince you they're right and fiscally competent with their climate plan, saying that dissenting voices are just creating a climate of fear. No, dozens of Albertans, informed individuals, informed politicians, policy makers, economists and groups like ours are exposing the NDP to the dreaded climate of fact. To you, climate fact. Energy will be more expensive, so you'll end up hanging your clothes on the line instead of using your dryer. Do you think the busy Premier will be hanging her clothes out on the line? Or perhaps that task will fall to her QP climate change husband? Or will it just be you? And what does it mean for you, young man? Well, there's a group called Generation Screwed. We recommend you join them. You will be burdened with billions of dollars in debt. And your parents will not have stopped climate change or reduced pollution. But lots of pension funds will have pocketed Alberta's cash for their renewable investments. And that will go on for at least 20 years. We don't call that climate leadership. Now here's a falsehood. We're protecting the environment by putting a price on carbon. Climate fact. Do you know what carbon is? Carbon is soot. Carbon is an element that you are made of. But the government is not pricing soot. They're putting a price on carbon dioxide, an odorless, colorless, benign gas that you and I breathe out at 40,000 parts per million per breath. So that doesn't protect the environment. That's a tax that makes some people rich and most people poor. That's what happened in Europe. And a problem that is hitting Europe's poorest most, energy poverty. In the EU, hundreds of billions of euros for climate policies have been paid by ordinary families and small, medium-sized businesses in what is undoubtedly one of the biggest wealth transfers from poor to rich in modern European history. As wealthy homeowners and uh, landowners install wind turbines on land and solar panels on their homes and commercial buildings, low-income families all over Europe have to foot skyrocketing electricity bills. This winter, millions of poor families will have to choose between eating and heating, and many can no longer afford to pay, so the utilities are cutting off their power. Where wind and solar were widely installed and carbon taxes instituted, power prices doubled tripled, people got poor, industry moved offshore, and that's why some emissions fell. No industry. But those industries just moved to places with no environmental regulations whatsoever. That destroys the environment and jobs. And that's the EU industry commissioner, quote, we face a systematic industrial massacre. We need a new energy policy we have to stop pretending because we can't sacrifice Europe's industry for climate goals that are not realistic and are not being enforced worldwide. Climate fact. What is the benefit of a government making your life more expensive with a carbon levy, a tax, to have to give you a rebate so that you can survive? Well, if you are so poor you need a carbon levy rebate, how are you going to be able to buy solar panels for your house? Most of you won't be able to afford it, and those who can will be subsidized. And what of green infrastructure and renewables in terms of energy efficiency? Look at the weather today, December 9, 2016. It's about minus 20, with a wind chill of minus 33 Celsius, and no wind power, virtually none. Meanwhile, coal and natural gas keep you warm, your house, your offices lit, your hospitals operating safely. Are you really sure you want to go to wind power? Because this is what will happen. Canada has been in one of the more stable economies in the Western world for years, and here's what ideological climate policies and widespread wind and solar did to the EU. 14 years after having adopted these key, key policies, uh, the economies of most EU member states are stagnating or in decline. Instead of sustainable economic growth, 
instead of more jobs, in, instead of greater social cohesion, the OECD warned last week that the crisis-ridden EU has become a major threat to the world economy. The carbon tax has nothing to do with the reduction of noxious emissions. That's a function of pollution controls implemented by industry, and they did that already, which is why Canada has the third best quality air in the world already. As for green jobs, Robert Lyman's report shows that fallacy the door. Climate fact. In most jurisdictions, studies show that for every one new green job, more than two conventional jobs are lost. For Friends of Science Society with the Climate Facts, I'm Michelle Sterling. Please join us, take out a membership, donate, support our work, share this information with family and friends. You need to know when you're being snowed.